Hi, this is Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Jose Angulo. He is a technical services veterinarian and a purse specialist from Zoetis. Jose, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, you've been studying purrs a long time, and I understand that you are a big advocate of vaccinating pigs early. Why is that? Yeah, uh, we have learned a lot about the vaccination uh, with purrs. Um, we have learned about the uh, different advantages and we know that uh, purse vaccination in piglets really um, gives uh, value to our producers. Now, um, one of the challenges with uh, piglet vaccination on purse is that we need to, to monitor um, the exposure of uh, the natural challenge in the nurseries mm -hmm. or in the growing pigs. And given, uh, having the opportunity on having an early vaccination um, on those piglets will allow us to generate that immune response with enough time to generate that robust uh, immunity and get those pigs protected. So do you have a, a certain baseline then where you would decide yes, we want to go in and vaccinate these pigs at day one or day five, or are there some herds where you might say, well, we can wait until day 14? Yeah, the, the first uh, question that we usually ask to producers of veterinarians is when those pigs are being exposed yeah, during the growing pigs. Uh, many times uh, we have the challenge that those pigs are getting exposed early in the nursery. And we have learned that with uh, purse vaccination, uh, we need at least <clears throat> three to four weeks to generate a, a full response. Mm -hmm. So having that opportunity on vaccinated early in the farming house will allow us to generate that immune response and that lead time to generate that robust immune response to uh, those pigs. Well, you talk about <clears throat> exposure. Aren't they getting some of that from the sows themselves? Well, yeah, that's another, that's another important uh, uh, topic on purse control because when we talk about purse control, we need to take this in a, in a holistic approach, right? So uh, sour stability, it's a huge part to have a success piglet vaccination. So yeah, sometimes we, we uh, have um, or uh, sour stability that where it's leaking the virus through those pigs and those pigs could be um, uh, infected, right? Um, and sometimes when we have um, um, not very strong stability in the saw herd, that is part also why we are seeing uh, early exposure in the nursery. So if you are having a, a not very solid uh, stability in, in the saw herd, um, or if you're coming from an outbreak, right, um, you need to monitor those piglets in order to really know when to vaccinate, um, at what time to vaccinate those piglets. But the sows are vaccinated themselves. Yeah, we, so. we include the sows um, also. Wouldn't there be a concern about maternal antibody interference when you're vaccinating pigs that early? Yeah, and that's something that we need to understand better. Uh, there's a few uh, there's little information about uh, maternal immunity impact on uh, vaccination. Um, our experience in the field, um, actually we just um, published a study on early vaccination during ASB this year and with uh, good results. Um, in my personal experience, I will give more importance to the time where they are getting exposed and generate that lead time to generate the immune response mm -hmm. over m any potential maternal immunity impact on those piglets. We are conducting some studies to understand better what is the real impact of maternal immunity. There is a great opportunity area there to learn more, but what we know uh, by fact is that um, vaccination timing for PERS will rely on the timing of exposure. So we need to generate this lead time of three weeks um, to really get the full benefit of uh, vaccination. Now, it appears that the pork industry, even though it's battling PERS, it's been blessed with uh, some good modified live vaccines for managing PERS. And from what I've 
seen in the research. I mean, the, the vaccines are pretty much the same in terms of, um, you know, as far as lung lesion reduction and uh, also the um, fighting off the challenge of the PERS virus. Uh, is, is that a correct assessment that they're all pretty much about the same? Yeah, that is a correct assessment. Uh, uh, modified life vaccines that are already in, in the market are um, good vaccines and they um, reduce, uh, they have shown benefits uh, on, I mean, all studies uh, when they compare to non-vaccinated um, uh, pigs. Now, there's some uh, differences on label claims right now um, that we can um, uh, maximize those features in the field. So label claims like duration of immunity, um, also uh, in reproductive uh, area and the respiratory uh, area, and also the flexibility of early vaccination, which allow us, again, as I mentioned before, to have that flexibility to um, to vaccinate those pigs in the right time at the right moment. Another also benefit of early vaccination is the, um, the benefit for the producer because many times they prefer to handle the piglets uh, in the farrowing house when they're processing. So they're doing that, um, that process anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, convenience also sometimes is um, a good part of, of this um, early vaccination uh, alternative. Which could translate into an economic benefit, yeah, I would think. Yeah. But it seems like when you're talking about early vaccination and duration of immunity, really talking about two ends of the spectrum there, is it possible to have both? Yeah, actually with confidence, at least with, uh, with our tool, with our modified light vaccine, uh, that we can vaccinate um, early because we have a duration of immunity of 26 weeks. So we are pretty confidence on, 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 that, on that regard. And why is duration of immunity so important? I know it's important with any vaccine, but particularly with PERS, uh, why is it so important to go deep into the pig's life cycle? Well, uh, we're, we're, I mean, we can talk about this in two, two main areas. One is the reproductive uh, uh, clinical science or the reproductive area. Mm -hmm. Um, and in these regards, I mean, we, we need to learn more about uh, birth immunity. So we're not sure, based on all the scientific information, really what, um, what is what, um, what part of the immune response protects uh, or sows or piglets, right? But what we know is that um, the homogenizing uh, the whole herd immunity will generate this immune response and will last for uh, some weeks. But then the big challenge that we have in vaccinated breeding herds are uh, rebreaks on vaccinated um, uh, breeding herds. And we have learned that and that's part also of the expectation. I mean, we know that vaccines uh, don't uh, prevent infection. So if we are in a high dense area, um, one high density area uh, where we have lateral exposure. Um, the sows, even if they're vaccinated, they will get infected and we're gonna have some uh, clinical signs. The um, a goal in this situation is to minimize uh, the severity and duration of those outbreaks. And having a robust immune response and having this duration of immunity um, uh, will allow us to achieve that goal in a better way. Now last year you wrote an excellent paper that advocated a three-phase systematic approach yeah. to PERS management and it sounded simple. Uh, one was define and measure, one was analyze and improve, the other one was control. As I say it sounds simple but it's probably pretty complicated. Yeah it's, it's complicated but at the same time I think that's a great approach to really um, evaluate the interventions that we're doing um, in our farms and make decisions in an ongoing basis. Um, these kind of uh, quality improvement tools like uh, Lean Six Sigma and other philosophies, I think it uh, uh, bring, brings a lot of value to our customers because uh, they allow to um, 
to evaluate those interventions without interrupting the production system. So we're adapting those tools to their uh, ongoing uh, processes and, and be able to evaluate those interventions in a very objective way. What's the one area where producers really need to buckle down and do a better job? I think they're doing a great job right now. Um, and I think the, the, the trend that the swine industry in general is going now, right now is more on the um, data analysis to um, make decisions and, and go on going from a reactive decision-making process to more to a proactive decision-making process using all this amount of um, a huge um, information that we're generating in, in, in farms right now because uh, right now we generate a lot of information and uh, but I think the opportunity here is how we we um, manage all this data and information and, and convert this in a, a better way to make decisions and help uh, the producers and, and veterinarians to, to make decisions based on their own uh, information. Now over the past two years there's been a lot of talk about the 174 strain of yeah. PERS. Is that something that came and went or is it still very much out there? No, pretty, I'm pretty, pretty sure that it will stay uh, for a longer time. Uh, this is one of the emerging uh, virus, PERS viruses that we, we see every time in a while. I mean, I remember since, I mean, many years, every, every certain time we, we have these kind of uh, situations where we have an emerging uh, PERS virus and that's, I mean, normal based on the nature of the virus per se, right? Um, I mean, we can talk about in the past about the 144, the 182 mm -hmm. and others and now this 174. Um, it's gonna, I think it's gonna stay uh, for a while in, in, in the farms. And does that complicate the picture or do the current vaccines have cross protection well, against 174? With first everything is complicated. <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we, um, as part of our committed with uh, our customers and producers, we uh, were able to uh, test our back first vaccine against this 174 virus. So we were blessed uh, to have a great um, collaboration effort uh, within Zoetis with R&D department and also working in collaboration with customers and tech services to um, to collect to yeah collect this uh, virus wild type virus and put this in a challenge model, uh, testing our vaccine, finding, I mean, similar results uh, to uh, other viruses. I mean, reduction, significant reduction of lung lesions, uh, reduction of viremia and improvement of average daily gain. So definitely we are confident also, uh, and that was really a good uh, study for ourselves uh, as well to gain confidence on, on our product, but also to show um, our customers that they can rely on, on our products and we're confident that um, we can minimize significantly the economic impact uh, with uh, our PERS vaccine and farms that are facing 174 in the growing peaks and also in the reproductive uh, area as well. Because that's where it's mostly a problem is in the growing pigs, right? With the 174? Well, it's a both, yeah. a both. Um, and it's the most prevalent uh, wild type virus right now based on our uh, diagnostic database. We're able to, to monitor also the different strains, per strains. Uh, and we have seen that it has been the most prevalent virus since two years, uh, two years and a half ago. So it's there and I think it's gonna be, uh, the, it's gonna stay longer uh, with us. But fortunately, we're, we have the right tools to, to deal with. Well, that's comforting to hear and I'm sure producers appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. We've been talking to Dr. Jose Hangulo. He is a technical services veterinarian and purse specialist for Zoetis. Thanks again, Jose. Thank you very much.